In this lesson, we're going to talk about insulin drips. So basically, an insulin infusion is a medication that should be taken very seriously. Um, patients can quickly become um, hypoglycemic. And um, because we have insulin infusing in their IV continuously, it is very commonly seen in ICU patients. In my hospital, um, if you're going to be on an insulin drip, the patient needs to be in ICU. It's not allowed to be on the floor. So usually you see it with the ICU patients, um, DKA or post-surgical or the very critically ill patients. Even if they're not diabetics, I've seen patients on insulin drips because they are hyperglycemic because of the stress their body is under because of the illness. So they need to get placed on an insulin drip. And the reason why we do it, it is very dangerous, but the reason why it is done is because it quickly decreases blood glucose in a very controlled manner because people are checking the glucose regularly and titrating the insulin infusion. It's easy to control it. Um, again, and this is something that we want to do because people who have tighter glycemic uh, control have better healing um, with surgeries or whatever illness that they have. So it's, again, very common. So let's talk about this. So if you have a patient that has an insulin infusion or you just received an order that you need to start an insulin infusion, great, don't freak out. The most important thing you can do is know why your patient needs it. Are they a diabetic? Are they in DKA? Is there ketones that somebody saw that you just don't know about? Find out why the patient needs it because this will obviously make you a better nurse. Um, when initiating the infusion, make sure that you follow the facility's protocols. The facility I work at has a set of instructions on what to do when you do start an insulin infusion. So make sure that you guys follow your facility protocol and know the target blood glucose and of course the patient's weight. The reason why you want to know the target blood glucose is because is the target blood glucose 150? then that's what we're aiming for, okay? If their blood sugars are 800 and they just want to get it down to 200, okay, know your target blood glucose. And, um, and this is a very good starting point when you do start an insulin infusion. So when you start the drip, the first thing that you need to do is obtain a blood glucose. You got to know a baseline. If you can look at the patient's A1C, that's even better because at least you know that they have been elevated. So if you have an A1C, great. If not, get a blood glucose, Get know the blood glucose for the last few hours so at least you know what you're dealing with. At my facility, if the blood glucose is greater than 160, then you start the insulin infusion at um, 0 0 0.025 units per hour. Um, so Let's do some math really quickly. If any of y'all have listened to the dimensional analysis video, go check that one out because we do several math problems. But just because, let's go ahead and do it over here. So I need to run it at 0 0.25 units per kg. Let's say my patient weighs 70 kilos. So that would be 0 0.025 units times 70 kilos, which would make it 1.75 units per hour. Um, most insulin bags, when you get them, they are 100 milliliters, and it's usually a one to one concentration, meaning it's a one unit per mil. So just right off the bat, I would know that I would need to run it at 1.75 mils per hour. And this is very good and very easy, and it, it's very useful for the nurses because when you titrate it, you know what it's going at so that at least you know exactly how many units per mil it, it is. So once you start this, so let's say we were going to start this on this patient that weighs 70 kilos and his blood sugar is 180. So we're going to start it at 1.75 units per hour. And let's say I start it at 10 o'clock. And then what I do after that is at 11 o'clock, I'm gonna come back and check his blood sugar. If for whatever reason, his blood sugar is 203, depending on the protocol, I kind of look and I multiply this number 
maybe by like 1.2 or whatever. So this doesn't change much. So maybe, maybe, and again, I'm not being exactly accurate, but maybe it would change to two mils per hour. And then at 12 o'clock, I check it again. And let's say at 12, it was 173. Well, then I would decrease it again, according to the protocol and the little formula that they would give you. Let's say I decrease it to 1.5 mils per hour. And then at one o'clock, I check it again and it's 170. Well, I may, according to the protocol, either leave it running at 1.5 or decrease it or more than likely increase it. So again, check your facility protocol because it is very, very detailed and very laid out on how, um, how to adjust that insulin. One piece of advice that I can give you guys is I know that Usually they say check the blood glucose in one hour, but if you're going to start insulin IV, check it a little bit more often when you first start it, just to make sure that you're not dropping that blood sugar too quickly. So um, again, depending on the results and the protocol, either titrate the insulin up or down. And this is one of those things that you do this through the entire day. You check that blood sugar every hour. And hopefully you get to a point where it just stays stable and you don't have to titrate that insulin up or low, uh, higher or lower. Now, at my facility, usually um, we have to have D5 normal saline to infuse in a separate line depending on the blood glucose level. Now, what that means is um, if here's my insulin and that's going to be a 100 mil bag and here's my tubing going to my patient over here, I'm going to have D5 going to the patient also in a separate line. And this is usually done so that the blood sugar doesn't drop too quickly. I mean, you are giving them insulin in the IV. This kind of gives them a little bit sh of sugar. Um, sometimes you can just do normal saline, sorry, D5 or normal saline, um, depending on the orders, depending on what the doctor orders, depending on their blood sugar, you will do one or the other. Again, we usually do D5. Um, either at 50 mils per hour or 25 mils per hour, depending on the patient and depending on their blood sugars and if they're eating or not. So again, as long as they're on the insulin drip, you're going to check this every hour or sooner if you need to. Um, nursing considerations. I, I feel like I've said this a hundred times. I can't say it enough. Monitor the blood glucose every hour while they are in an insulin infusion. Remember that they can become hypoglycemic very easily. So continuously monitor for any hypoglycemia. Make sure that you don't decrease the blood sugar too rapidly. You don't want to do that because sometimes they can have signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia because of the fluid shifts. They can also have cerebral edema. So you don't want to do it too rapid, rapidly. You don't want to go to from 900 at 10 o'clock in the morning to 130 at 11 o'clock. This, you, you know, and you would think, hey, this is good. You did good. No, this is too much, too quickly. They can have the cerebral edema. They can have signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. They can have too many complications. So you want to take it slow in bringing down that blood sugar. And then you also want to monitor their potassium. Um, you, all, you do monitor all electrolytes, but specifically potassium. When insulin, regular insulin is given IV, it actually pushes um, their potassium into the cells. So that decreases the serum potassium, meaning the, pota the 3.5 to 5.5, it'll go down because the potassium is going into the cells because of the insulin that we are given. So if somebody's on a continuous insulin infusion, um, you want to make sure that um, you monitor for them for hypokalemia or hyperkalemia or just monitor them so that their blood potassium doesn't go down. Okay. Um, I don't know if any of y'all have ever, ever gotten an order, but one time I had a patient with a potassium of like 7.2 and I was a brand new nurse. I think I had six months in, I called the doctor and he's like, okay, go ahead and give him 10 units of regular insulin in an amp of D50. And I was like, um, I told you that the potassium was 7.2. His blood sugar is okay. He's like, Maria, IV insulin is going to help bring down the potassium, push the potassium into the cells. Um, and the reason why I was given the D50 was just so that they didn't become hypoglycemic because of the insulin. So again, if they're on an insulin drip, watch the potassium for that reason. 
So to recap on this little lesson, um, if you have a patient that's on an insulin drip, it's common in ICU patients, it's common with DKA, surgical patients, I work in CVICU, so our post-cabbage patients, whether they are diabetic or not, will come out with an insulin drip to make sure that their, their blood sugar levels stay low. Remember when you're under stress, uh, blood sugars can go up, so you want to keep them low so that it can help promote healing. Um, make sure that you continuously monitor the patient, continuously monitor those blood sugars, make sure that they're not showing signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, and check the blood glucose hourly, titrate that insulin as needed, watch your electrolytes, and um, make sure that you continuously check on your patients. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you want to just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.